Before we catch up with Clive Palmer, just want to jump onto a story that you might have been hearing about over the last 12 hours or so. It affects mines in the north, or it affects the people who work there, in the north and northwest of the state. In fact, uh, a few of our big mines are going to be changing the badge on their uh, on their work gear. They're going from uh, three of these mines are going from Redpath, a uh, mining contractor, to Barminko. And if you were listening to Drive in Northern Tasmania with uh, Damien Brown last night, you would have heard Robert Flanagan from uh, from the Australian Workers Union suggest that he's got concerns about what this change of mining contracting company might mean for employees? Well, what has happened is each of the incumbent contractors at those sites have lost their contract to a competitor. As a consequence of that, there's been significant disruption to about 500 employees across those three mining contractors. And the level of disruption varies from minor adjustment through to complete turmoil and upheaval. Uh, In some cases, uh, it has simply meant employees changing overalls uh, and whose badge is on the overall. But in other cases, it means people are now unemployed, looking for work. And in a number of those cases, they haven't been paid either their long service leave or redundancy payments. And there we are, Bill Fitzgerald, uh, that's Robert Flanagan, rather, with the Australian Workers Union, talking with Damien Brown on Drive yesterday afternoon. Bill Fitzgerald's the principal uh, em- uh, principal with the Employee Relations Consultancy with the Australian Mines and Minerals Association. Uh, Mr Fitzgerald, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Leon. And thank you for talking with us this morning. Uh, will job losses come out of uh, out of this change from uh, Red, F- Red Path to Barminko in the northwest of Tasmania? No, I don't believe so, Leon. Um, the situation with mining contractors is that um, usually the contract is the commercial contract um, with the major mines is, is usually for a three-year term, and sometimes uh, that, that scope of the contract may change from either developmental and, and or a production um, scope. Um, and uh, it is it is pretty normal practice um, that these uh, contractors change fairly um, fairly frequently. Uh, we've had in Tasmania uh, three or four major contractors, uh, and those contractors um, hold contracts um, if not only in Tasmania but also in uh, in other parts of Australia. And it's pretty much a national workforce um, where uh, employees may fly into Tasmania, and conversely, they may fly out of Tasmania to a um, another site. And usually what happens in this case is where there is a change, and there had, certainly have been changes at two major sites, in fact, three major sites, um, what happens is the, the, the uh, um, incoming contractor uh, may um, either um, recruit from uh, the employees from the outgoing contractor or they may recruit from their own sources. So in, in terms of a net result... Um, there won't be any overall uh, losses as suggested by Mr Flanagan in my view. And Mr Flanagan says that uh, that there might be a risk that entitlements won't be paid for uh, for some of these workers. Why do you um, think he says the, that? The, there is, uh, I'm, I'm aware that there, that there are there is a legal uh, dispute in respect to some of those entitlements uh, and that, that hasn't yet been heard by the appropriate tribunals. Um, I'm acting on behalf of some of the contractors there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's yet to be determined, um, Leon. What are the issues in that case? Um, the issue is, the issue is, is whether the, um, at, at the end of the term there is a redundancy payment or not. Um, um, uh, in, in some cases, contractors have taken the view that uh, the, the, the contract is for the term of, uh, or is defined by the term of the commercial contract and there's no expectation of ongoing employment. So it's a little bit like a fixed-term contract in that um, at the end of the contract there is no entitlement for redundancy. So that's yet to play out um, in the, the various tribunals and I expect um, Mr Flanagan's union to make an application in due course about that matter. Uh, and so do mining companies actually change uh, labour contracting 
companies from time to time uh, so that they can uh, avoid those payments? Uh, no, not at all. No, not at all. Um, each each contract uh, may have an individual position on that. Um, uh, it will depend very much on the terms of the commercial contract they have with their principals. Uh, but there's no one position on that, Leon. Uh, do uh, do mining contracting or do mining companies change mining contractors as they have in this case, uh, so that they can uh, they can reduce the number of employees that they uh, have no, without look, uh, industrial dispute? No, no, no certainly. Um, um, each contract, uh, I mean, the outgoing contract in the case of the one which Mr. Flanagan has happened, the, the, the scope of the contract for the incoming contractor may in fact be different. Um, so they will um, select the number of people um, required for that particular job and the scope of their contract, and they will recruit uh, um, the best people. And th- those sources may, in fact, come from their own uh, own their own internal sources. Uh, they they may have, in fact, lost contract contracts on the mainland, and other employees have become available. So uh, they'd be seeking, particularly with skilled operators, particularly the more higher paid. Uh, specialised jobs, they'd be uh, seeking to retain their skilled staff who they've invested a great deal of time and training into, uh, and and often they may come from mainland sites which they might have lost. Will there be fewer workers employed out of this changeover? Uh, I can't answer that specifically, Leon. Um, uh, it, it'll depend on the, the incoming contractor's needs and the scope of the contract. Um, I, at this stage, my, my gut feel is that... Um, they'd pretty, be much, pretty much the same numbers, uh, and that's generally been the case. Uh, and I, I've been involved in the industry now for 15 years, and I've seen um, contractors change. Uh, in fact, um, in the case of Queenstown, um, uh, there was a contractor there for 10 years. He, they lost the contract, um, uh, and there's been a contractor, the new contractor there for three years, and the original contractor has, in fact, regained the contract. So uh, all the contractors uh, who I act for, or our, my association acts for, um, pretty much accept that that's um, part of the contracting world. They win some, they lose some, uh, and that that may occur within Tasmania or within the national scene. And as a result, um, you know they regard, I think, their workforce as a national workforce, and they will will recruit accordingly. Uh, Bill Fitzgerald, uh, good to talk to you this morning. Look, just briefly, I was up in Darwin earlier in the week, stunned to hear how many Tasmanians are actually making their way to other parts of the country to find work. What are you seeing at the moment? Uh, look, yes, that is the case. Um, um, uh, certainly there's a, a number of workers who do fly out of Tasmania who have specialised skills. And I think Tasmanian workers are very well regarded in that regard, and that, and that, in that case, and that's why they do, in fact, in fact, in fact pick jobs up uh, interstate. Um, but um, we, we're hoping, as you're probably aware, Leon, that there are other sites on the West Coast which uh, um, are proposed for development, and they will be large employers uh, ultimately. Uh, and uh, we're hoping that um, you know they can be employed um, within the local communities on the west coast of Tasmania. Good to talk to you this morning. Thanks very much, Leon. Bill Fitzgerald uh, with AMA, the Australian Mines and Minerals Association. Uh, somebody who knows his way around a mine is going to join us in the studio next. Clive Palmer has uh, been campaigning around Australia for uh, his uh, candidates for the Palmer United Party. He will join us in the studio to talk about, well, a range of issues, including whether or not Kevin Rudd deliberately sabotaged his campaign yesterday.